city. That may keep him at that those incredibly popular levels of 69% unfavorable. I would think that the blue-collar cities would be less inclined to consider the governor favorably than say the intellectual communities like Cambridge and I'm not that I'm obsessed with Cambridge this week or anything but Brookline and, and Amherst and that. Isn't, isn't it possible we change the Republican ticket uh, that Weld run for Attorney General where he would have a shot and not waste his time running you know for governor wasting all of his own personal fortune um, let, the, let them fight it out for lieutenant governor and then replace the two unknowns uh, who are on the bottom of the ticket for Secretary of State and State Auditor with uh, Paul Cronin or somebody, uh, uh, Dave Cowens. Uh, replace them so that you have a highly visible ticket in the fall. I think that if uh, any Republican who thinks about it is probably keeping his fingers crossed that the people like Guy Carboni, Bill Sawyer who are running for AG and this fellow Murray who's running for Auditor and McCarthy for Secretary of State, they're keeping their fingers crossed that they won't get the necessary signatures. How many do they need to get on the ballot? Five, five thousand or ten thousand signatures? It, it varies. I don't Move have it all memorized. Yeah, I know the lieutenant governor is ten thousand, but uh, I don't. I a lot of these count. people, you know, wanted to run for, or at least one of them wanted to run for state rep. So maybe there's a good chance. You can't count Bill Weld out, though. I mean, he has a right to go in there and fight for the, for no, the office that he wants. Counting him out. I think a lot of people who like Bill Weld, the feel that he would win for attorney general after all the lieutenant governor spot. Everybody's fighting over that, and there's no power there whatsoever. It seems to me the best, next best spot on the ticket is the Attorney General. And uh, there's a shot at that one because Shannon, I don't feel, is very uh, strong, even though some polls indicate he's strong. And Harshbarger may well take him in a bruising battle. Not, not possible, Howie? I, I would tend to doubt it. I just, uh, I, I think that uh, most of the uh, energy is going to be expended on the uh, governor's race, and I think it's going to be hard when you get down that level to uh, to upset an incumbent. Yeah, do you think people are going to vote this this time out, or do you think that it's some folks are so disgusted, so unhappy with the state of affairs in Massachusetts that they simply won't vote, and that will obviously stick the entrenched right back into the trench? That is the worst thing that could happen, and I really hope that 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 people aren't even considering for a minute sitting out this election. This is the year to make some real changes and turn it all around. Well, governors, are you ready? We're ready now to take some calls and comments from at home. Uh, we haven't done this together on television. What we've done it's it uh, every every uh, <laughs> uh, Tuesday afternoon on uh, radio, and we'll do that tomorrow on RKO at four o'clock in the afternoon, and we'll have some more um, real material. That is material that we have not discussed on television. Let's begin. Hello. Hi, Jerry. Hi there. Hi, I just wanted to say hi and tell Barbara I think she's great. I think she should be running. <laughs> and I really... Uh, You've been asked a lot of times, Barbara, why don't you just step into the fray? Because I'm just having so much fun doing what I do. But thank you, anyhow. No, oh, well, that's wonderful. And I just keep them telling them to cut up the credit cards for the state legislature. They've gone over their credit limit, and all they do is just spend and spend. So. That's a good well, image. Well, would you make a telephone call if I ask you on radio in the afternoon to make a telephone call to the state legislature during their thrust for new taxes, will you make the one call? I sure would. All right, just want to know. Thank you very much. Next caller at 9311125. Hello. Always a pleasure, Governor. Always a pleasure. Looking even better or good on TV. It is my pleasure. My pleasure. You know what? Notice what Howie's doing with his pen. <laughs> Watch flipping this. It. He's flipping it. He's flipping it. He's sure. flipping his wig, too. Watch. I'll close my eyes and do it. He does it blindfold Isn't it amazing? As well. You're good at it, ah. Howie. There used to be a guy that put uh, they put dough on his eyes. Remember those days, the early days of television? There was some guy that put dough on his eyes. I mastered this just when Ted Max Amateur Hour went off the air. Too bad, too bad, Howie. Okay, what were you, what were you saying, sir? Uh, Jerry, I wholeheartedly agree with you that your phone calls have definitely made the difference uh, as far as the uh, atmosphere out here, uh, getting people involved in uh, you know knowing that they can talk to their rep, and, and more importantly, their rep is definitely listening. You know, uh, one, as one of the uh, reps once said, that uh, if they get more than four or five calls, it's uh, it's it's a uh, catastrophe. And well, some reps I understand got uh, over a thousand phone calls. If they get a hundred, it's a massive attack upon them. And I think Barbara, that they are really concerned about the fact that this is a broad-based telephone uh, calls. These are not my people or your people or Howie's people. They're just folks who are concerned. And it isn't just the phone calls, it's that people who listen to this show, when they see the state reps at the grocery mm -hmm. store, at the dry cleaners, tell them that they've been listening to the show. And the information they pick up 
it's something that they can then go out and talk about with real knowledge about how the system works or doesn't work. Well, well, now, Jerry, now that we got that, you know, that part of the, the, the solution, I think, uh, going, the ball is, is rolling now, and I think the tide, like you said, has definitely turned. What about this? The tide has turned where? Turn to, to the people that... Well, you'd be surprised what they think up, at, uh, up on the hill. They oh. think that the tide has turned in the other way. They think that the Globe editorial writers have turned the tide. How, how about the, uh, the massive demonstration that, uh, you know, you hear this new well, how battle... how about a massive demonstration of phone calls? Well, we've done that now. I yep. mean, that's succeeded, No, but you I see, think. it's coming up again, uh, and... Right, and no doubt. And timing is very important. That has to be uh, a priority, no doubt about it. But this new cry of not one, no, not one cent more mm -hmm. that we've been hearing from... I know you don't want to talk about it on radio, but on TV now, maybe it's a little different. Week. And I know, Barbara, you, you're not for that. And, and at first, when I heard that, I was kind of uh, 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 confused about it. And now I understand your, your point after you explained it, that, you know, it, it is a, uh, you know, where you get... 5,000 people in, in your concern. 5,000 people is not a lot of people. That's the whole problem. But that would be... If, that, uh, if it rains on a particular day when people want to come out, uh, then we got another problem of how it looks on the television tube. There's a whole perception. I, I understand. But 5,000 phone calls at the it, State exactly. House has great meaning. We want to leave it at that. All, all right. right. Thank you. 931-1125. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. I'm uh, from Cambridge. Too bad. And I would like, no, I'd like to thank you for what you guys are doing. What are we doing, sir? Well, you're bringing the truth to the attention. Oh, well, that's people. nice from Cambridge. Yes. We thought we were going to be under attack. You must oh, be from no. North Cambridge. Sir? You must be from North Cambridge. No, sir, I'm from about two blocks from Widener Library. Well, we appreciate that. Thank you. What else Let's, is on your mind? Yes. At a faculty meeting the other day, I heard an interesting phrase. I wonder if you'd heard it. Someone was talking about yellow-collar crime. Yellow collar crime. Yes. <laughs> no, I can hardly wait to hear what that is. Well, they said it was the uh, uh, cowardly refusal to perform an elected task because you're afraid of not being reelected. Have you heard that, Howie? Have you, have you ever used that term? Yellow collar crime? I just haven't been spending enough time in Harvard Square, I guess. All well, right, well, we'll get on to the next call. Well, speaking. I, I look at it rather differently, which is legislators are supposed to vote the way they're, they're rep they're, the people want them to. That's why they're called representatives. Yeah, but not necessarily. I mean, sometimes uh, your, your constituents may be wrong. And you may be taking what is an unpopular stand. On an issue of, of yeah. uh, that's a moral issue to one, yes. Mm -hmm. But on an issue of how much people want to pay in taxes and what they want to see done with their government, I think people have a right to tell their state reps. And the impression I've always had is their state reps aren't so much cravenly following their constituents as their state reps agree with them. They've been in there. They know mm -hmm. that things are out of control. Well, uh, we are the governors, uh, Bob Anderson, Howie Carr, me, Jerry Williams, and this is our 100th broadcast here on Fox 25. Here's another one of those great shows from the past. Wow. We're fans, we don't want you to move the team, and when you say it's the most onerous lease in the league, Mr. Sullivan is the one that, you know, wrote it or did it with his son, and you must have read it before you bought the team, so I don't know how you can use that as an excuse. I have, I'm not making any excuse. You are saying I can use it as an excuse. You know, we have the most exciting football team right now in the NFL. We have a rookie runner that's gone over a thousand yards. We got a hometown boy that's knocking them dead. We've won five out of six games since I signed the papers, and we're right in the thick of the, uh, of the fight, and the team is playing where? At Foxborough. Well, you could... uh, this is our 100th broadcast. It is a live broadcast. You can call us if you'd like at 931-1125. The governors are here. Howie Carr of the Herald, Barbara Anderson of Citizens for Limited Taxation. And you were saying about who appoints the members of the Ethics Committee? Well, they're, they're various, uh, various state officials have the, have the appointments. I, I, uh, one guy, for instance, is a, uh, the headmaster of Roxbury Latin. He was appointed by uh, Secretary of State uh, Michael Conley. And uh, right around the time that the, the headmaster of Roxbury Latin was appointed to the Ethics Commission, do you know what he received from Senate President William M. Bulger? I have no idea. Bulger's old rug from his office. No kidding. Sent it, sent it right it, down to... Was it to, an oriental rug? It was a nice rug. They sent it right down to the office. It was to, a gift, you mean? It was, it was a gift. I, I don't know if they... Uh, I thought we had laws pertaining to the 
uh, dis disposing of surplus state property. I don't know if I the laws so. were. It was an oriental rug. It's worth some money. They had to. I guess they had to. It was so big, the oriental rug. That, How uh, big was it, Howie? It was big enough to go into the ante room right at the uh, entrance. <laughs> it, was... to, it had to be cut. It was so large. They cut the rug? They cut the rug. I can't, I can't believe it. I cut an oriental rug? I, you know, I'm sure that shows you what he knows. Nothing How about rugs. It's an oriental rug. We don't know it's an oriental rug. It could be a rag rug from Appalachia no, or something. No, we, I don't we know think so. Not on the honor Our office. legislative leaders, though, seem to like oriental rugs. Consider George Kavarian. I mean, he, he took those rugs from uh, his friend, the oriental rug dealer. Uh, he, he took it on what? Uh, to test it out, right? Yes, he test, tested several of them out for 20 months. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a pretty good deal, isn't it? Well, Anyone ever let you try out a rug for 20 months? Not for 20 months, no, but I know some rug companies who give it to you about three days and let you see how it looks. It just, but, but nevertheless, the, this ethics committee with a report this afternoon, a, a yeah. com commission, yeah. uh, they're, they're not a committee of members of the legislature, are they? No, they, the eth they do have an ethics committee in the legislature. It's one of the uh, least used uh, offices in the state house. Cobwebs everywhere. You know? uh, obviously. The, the fact is, however, that they spent a thousand hours uh, mm -hmm. and 18 lawyers determining that there was a problem uh, with respect to an appearance of impropriety. Here's their, here's their report, the staff committee report. A thousand hours on that. And they, they wanted to throw the book at uh, at George Kaveri and the staff. Are you going to bring that tomorrow so we can really get into it tomorrow? That's right. Camp? The... The attorney general is supposed to be investigating how I got this thing, but I haven't heard from him yet. Well, I mean, is it not public property? No, it's not. It wasn't supposed to get out. It is. They now. wanted this. They wanted this case broomed and uh, private. Well, but what do you have there, Howie? This is uh, this is an emergency employment notice for the uh, county of Middlesex. And Sheriff the Sheriff John McGonagall, you know, and a Dukakis oh. appointee. Yeah. He's made an emergency hire. Do you know who he hired? No, I can't Sher imagine. Sheriff McGonagall hired in an emergency the son of Sheriff Charlie Reardon, but the next was, county up. But he was qualified, wasn't he? he? It says here, you know, you have to have, list any special skills that the sheriff's son has to be hired by the sheriff from the next county. Do you know what one of his skills is? He has a mass driver's license. No kidding. That's very, very special. Did he have any strikes on his license? <laughs> <laughs> it says he's had some exposure to firearms, too. Oh, no kidding. Mm -hmm. But his main qualification was that he had a connection. That's what I would say. Because none of this goes on in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Connections are people who are connected with anything. Is that right? Not really, Jerry. Not really. All right, next caller, please, at 931-1125. This is an unconnected panel. Hello? Hello. Yes. How are you doing? Pretty good. I'd just like to say I'm, uh, I'm honored here to be talking to this great panel of people. You don't got worry here. about it, sir. You don't have to be honored to do anything. Yeah. Don't have to bow or kiss any rings. No, I won't do that. Okay. First, I'd like to talk to Barbara. Barbara? I'd like to say congratulations on question two, Bob. You, you, I'm glad to see you looking out for the people of the state and the economy. The way you like to talk about it all we, the time. Our, uh, this guy is coming in the back. This, this guy is coming in the back door. Am I right, sir? Excuse me. I say, are you coming in the back door? Oh no, no, I'm stepping right to your face. I'm looking well, at you right now. That's what TV. I'm saying. Well, why don't you come in the front door? We'll leave the door open, and then Barbara will know what the hell you're talking about. Well, she's so, always, no, she's, let let her respond to your question. Okay, go ahead, Bob. Our, our initiative petition doesn't have it. a question yet. Oh, it doesn't have a question. No, this, I think he's giving you a tickle on uh, losing the. Uh, Thank you, Howie. The question then why would in he 88. say congratulations? You, we lost it. Saying no on question two. Right, but he said congratulations, and we lost it, so that's why what he's saying doesn't make any sense. Right, you know, well, well, how, how do you feel about, about the new uh, tax package, sir? No, no. Well, first, I'd like to address one thing, though. Well, she, we got that. That was two years ago. Right, I know that. No, what we want to do is talk about today, tomorrow, right, the next she's day. Sitting, she's sitting there right now talking about the economy of the state. Do you know yes. what you really... Do you, do you honestly sit there, and you're going to sit there and look in the camera and say that you're concerned about the economy of the state when what you did on question two. You can turn around two years later and back about it. I don't understand it. But what yeah, did we do on question two? Question two lost, so therefore it has no impact at all. Exactly. That's what I'm getting at. You're going to sit there and say you're so worried about the economy of the state, yet you pushed for something that almost destroyed this state. The How would it have destroyed the, the state? I don't understand. I'm sorry, you're not making any sense right. to me. Okay. Is somebody well, coaching you back there? No, nobody's coaching me. I say either the AFL coaching you, AFL-CIO coaching you? I'm not a member there. Well, I mean, what, what are you so concerned about uh, question two for last year? You said it was two years ago. Well, what I'm, right, getting, two at, years what I'm ago. getting at, I'm a non-union construction worker, right? And I do get the rate. 
on a prevailing wage drop that Barbara Anderson wanted to do away with. Hey, listen, we're way off the track here. We're no, trying we're to talk about next year and the year after that. See you later. Next, 931-1125. Hello? Good evening, Jerry. Yes, will you speak up, please, sir? Hi, Jerry. How okay. are you? Good. Very good. Jerry, I want to direct this question to uh, Governor Carr. Howie. Yes. Yes, yes Howie. Go ahead. Yes, about three weeks ago you were talking about uh, Tom McGee had a, um, given a pay raise to the headmaster of the North Shore Community College in Lynn. No, I, I, no, I didn't say that. I said that uh, one of uh, Tommy's cronies, a guy named Jack Berry, was one of the very few people at North Shore Community College who got a raise. Got a raise. Do you yes. uh, just happen to realize that uh, they named that building after Tom McGee? Well, I'm sure there was a nationwide search to find someone that that building should be named after. Well, it was, it was in all fairness. It was in his district, and he had worked hard to get the community college located in Lynn. So I, that seems to be a logical what thing to do. What I've always wondered, though, is why do we need North Shore Community College in Lynn and then Salem State College just a few miles away? I don't know, Howie. It, uh, you know, what the state governs, I, you know, it makes me laugh. I mean, you have North Shore Community College in Beverly where it basically originated from. And uh, right across the street, basically, you know, from the college, they're building the uh, the new T garage, which, uh, you know, all in one just makes it one big conglomeration of the city of Lynn, which, uh, you know. <laughs> How about the new taxes? How about the new tax package, sir? I'm not too sure about that, Jerry. But I, you know, I, when I heard that thing about uh, North Shore Community College, I just thought how he would get a chuckle out of that that the building was named after Tom McGee. Would you put that in your memory bank? Sure, it, it must it must hold one of the state's largest collection of comic books. Yep. All right, next call, please, at 931-1125. Hello. Hi. Hi. I'd like to talk about public education. Why? Why? Did somebody bring it up? No, but I'd like to bring it up. I see. Are, are you pretty happy about Nancy Harrington just getting the job as uh, president of uh, Salem State College? Do you know who she's related to? Who is she She's related? the cousin of uh, former Senate President uh, Kevin Harrington. And she's the cousin of uh, former congressman, Michael Harrington. And she's also the cousin of current Salem mayor, Neil Harrington. I said, but what's new then? I mean, is this something new? Excuse me. Well, yes. this is just the way it works in public I higher education. I grant you that. Yes. I'm not talking about higher education, though. I'm talking about the fact that I have four children. Six years ago, I bought a home for my husband and I bought a home. For now, we, we, uh, uh, excuse me. We can't go into long stories about w you know why you want better education. Okay, uh, but you we do. We want better education. I understand that. But if you want to get to something that Barbara or Howie and myself can answer, we'll respond to. Okay, this is my question then. How do you separate the fact that you want money to go to the town for better education versus the fact that you want... I don't want my taxes paying for somebody opening the door at the state house. I don't want all these relatives. However, I do want money to come into my town for my kids to have the chance. Well, that's right down your alley, Barbara. It is, it is tough. The thing that I find people out there are frustrated about is while they can say no to taxes, they can't set the priorities for state government. Um, though indirectly you can by putting the pressure on Actually, you know, half the doorkeepers are gone in the House. So you're starting to make a move in that direction. And, of course, there will be a ballot question this fall that will give 40% of growth revenues to the cities and towns. The trick yeah. is to make sure there are some growth half revenues. Half the uh, doorkeepers are gone under the greatest pressure I've ever seen yeah. over a very small issue. It really is a relatively small issue, as the uh, guys at the State House like to say. It's symbolic, however. Not these guys were hanging around. They were given the name called doorkeepers, but they really aren't doorkeepers they did other kinds of work as well they they did errands for the legislature they worked uh, as people in the legislature court offices would be pro or offices of they, the, they uh, prefer to call themselves court officers yeah right so uh, the the fact is that uh, but somebody it, has to play cards with the reps yeah. if they can't get a uh, gin game going i mean someone <laughs> has to go out and take the bets on the fifth of high enough, but those are where the, the where the where the large you know reform should be made uh, that's what I'm trying to say. What people say, well, I'll get rid of the doorkeepers and everything is fine, and it's not. No, but the mindset that chooses to fund some things at the State House instead of funding other things, the, right. the, 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 the choice of priorities. The program dies, but the doorkeepers live. I mean, it's or you uh, continue exactly. to fund the, the lieutenant governor's office, but you cut the, exactly. hand, the services exactly for the blind. Why are it's so a mindset that, that has to be addressed, and she's right. It is difficult to get them f concentrating on the proper priorities. Well, again, this is our 100th uh, broadcast here on Channel 25, and uh, this is the most requested clip. This was early on in the, I think it was in the first five programs anyway, 
Early on, this is one of the most requested clips we've had from an old broadcast. You'll recognize attorney Larry O'Donnell and Frank McGee. That phony, that phony lobbying activity you did out West Roxbury with 600 police cars, 200 motorcycle cops. It cost $2 million to put on that phony performance. Sergi would hate you for it. He'd rather them cars to be out doing what they're supposed to do and guard people. That was a union lobby activity. And let me tell you, you didn't send a car to Jane Caradus down in Lynn, 28 years old, that got called up to the third floor of his house because the lady was being attacked and he got stabbed to death. There wasn't one police car at his funeral, let me tell you. He wasn't a paid hero. He was a good Samaritan and is dead. And you phonies wouldn't even go to his wake. Can I just and that let, happened. Let, let, and I don't forget get, the Cambridge police I want to get when you're school, convicted let me know, of yeah. murder. All right, okay, school, I'm going to break it here and I'll let Frank, right after this break, come back and respond to Larry O'Donnell and Al Johnson. Back in a moment here on uh, Channel 25. We're back, Howie Carr, Barbara Anderson, the governors, and we'll see you tomorrow on radio, by the way, at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. We'll be seen in the western part of the state as well, or at least heard loud and clear. And now more of your calls at 931-1125 on our 100th program. Hello. Hello, is Barbara there, please? Yeah, she's here. Barbara, I live in Wakefield. I've lived here less than two years, and uh, I can't recall if we've had, if this is going to be the third attempted override on Prop two and a half or the fourth. We're having another one. They're telling us now that uh, they can't afford to pick up our trash. We're having an override. It's called a general override and uh, for just trash, but I thought you would call that a debt exclusion anyway. The way it's going to work, they're going to charge us 34 cents for every thousand dollars of valuation if it passes. If it doesn't pass, we're going to have a flat user fee if we vote that at town meeting. You know what that's all about, Barbara? Sort of, I think you'd almost have to have a flat user fee. I don't think they can, they can assess you on the value of your house for a trash collection fee. That would be a tax and would fall within the property tax that's limited. That yeah, sounds it, strange to me. Yes, it will be, and uh, it'll be deductible, supposedly, on our taxes. But it's being called a two-and-a-half override for general government. Yeah, but a fee has to be set up by what you use. If they're going to set up a fee, if you have two barrels, you pay so much. If you have four barrels, you pay so much. But they can't just count the number of houses and divide the, the, the trash department by that and assess it. There's that's going to have to be some do. attempt 30, to make it a genuine fee, I think. Yeah, that's what they're saying. 34 cents for every uh, $1,000 value valuation. Color. They're saying average on a uh, $200,000 house would be $68. I don't think Governor that's Carr, legitimate think? at all. I was just going to ask the caller uh, from Wakefield if he thinks his rep, Richard Tassay, should run for uh, the Senate seat that uh, Jackie Brennan is vacating. I'd love to see him do that. I like uh, Richard Tassay very much. The only thing, he came out in favor of this override. I don't know if he was given all the particulars. But on the past overrides, they've always said they're going to lay off the police and the fire. And then, after the override fails, they've all failed, they magically come up with the money. And I'm going to vote against it because I don't trust the politicians anymore. I'd rather pay a flat user's fee, even if it costs more money, which it will. Well, that's what they're doing in my town. In my town, they have assessed a flat user's fee. I don't think it can be incorporated within the real estate tax. It is already incorporated within the real estate tax. That is garbage pickup, and I protested the business of it being uh, involved in a fee situation because you can't even deduct that as part of your real estate tax deduction. You lose that deduction, whatever, yes, however possibly. small it may Wakefield be. Wakefield is trying probably to draft this in some way so people mm -hmm. can still get the deduction, but I think they'd better check with the Department of Revenue first to make absolutely sure this is going to be considered legitimate. All right, our next caller, please, at 931-1125, Barbara Anderson, Howie Carr, and me. Hello. Hello, Jerry. Hi. Hey, what's the plural of governors? I mean, what's the pl plural of governor? Governor. Is it, is it honoraria? Honoraria? Yeah. I, I, why, why do you say that? No, no seri well, what I'd like but to But seriously, right? Ser yeah, with all seriousness aside, uh, <laughs> I'd like to thank Barbara for two and a half. And I, I'd like to know, since that's gone into effect, has anybody's property taxes uh, not, you know, or, or, or rather, has anybody's property taxes gone uh, down? What, what, um, in, in, the, in the cities that had to cut for the first couple of years after Prop 2.5, yes, you saw dramatic reductions in places like Fall River, um, New Bedford, Boston, Worcester, Why do you ask that question, sir? 
Oh, okay. Well, I was just curious because I live in uh, Wellesley, and it's oh, yeah, it wasn't really. Well, Wellesley, they they were always under the limit, a lot of two and a half percent increase. Plus, Wellesley's passed through some overrides, so. Yeah, but two and a half wasn't uh, instituted as a result of the fact that people wanted to lower real estate taxes. They just wanted to cap them, keep them on a on a steady level, because at that point in time, if I remember, the real estate taxes were going out of sight. I mean, going out of sight. And if it wasn't for two and a half we would have had maybe double, triple, or even quadruple the real estate taxes today. I, I agree. So I, that, well, I, I spoke, yeah, some, of the, uh, some of the towns are exceptions, or rather some of the big cities are exceptions, but uh, nobody's, uh, everybody, all the cities and towns are whining about it, but uh, all it really was was a cap. In other That's words, 2.5% increase. Well, now some of the reps want to, uh, want to base the cap on the rate of inflation, right? So if uh, we went back to 1980 rates of inflation, you could uh, raise property taxes 17% and you'd still be under two and a half, right? Well, even this year's inflation, they're talking about a possible 8% because they're going to use municipal inflation, which may be more or less, but it's probably more. Um, I don't see any inclination on the part of the legislature to change Proposition 2 yeah, and Well, half the fact year. is also that uh, every time you turn around with any member of the leadership, uh, that they're asking for new taxes and fees and fines on every level. doesn't matter where. I mean, if they want to bust open two and a half, they'll try to bust open two and a half. If they want more real, in, in, um, income taxes, they'll bust open the income tax. So every way you turn, Howie and Barbara, we are now being asked to open our pocketbooks again. Again and again. And that's where, where it's at. There's nobody saying cut back. I mean, there's nobody with a cutback plan. Well, there have been actually a lot of plans up there, and some of those things are going to be addressed, and I do think you're going to see a cut in the rate of increase again in the House Ways and Means Committee budget, but it is still going to be an increase, and they can't afford increases this year. All right, our next caller, please, at 931-1125 for Barbara and Howie. Hello. Hello, Jerry. Yes. Listen, I, uh, I just moved in from out of state about a year and a half ago. Welcome aboard. Open your pockets. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm finding out. Listen, thank you... Uh, all three of you guys are my heroes. It's just a, it's a dream being on with all three of you. But listen, you were talking earlier about uh, the power, you guys being governors, et cetera, being objective, coming in and, and not having to live this stuff for the last 30, 40, 50 years, whatever. You guys are like um, chaperones looking over burglars. You guys are doing something important. What state did you come from? Michigan. So, There's some pretty hefty burglars in that yeah. state, too. Oh, yeah, Mayor but, Young but, comes but the to difference mind in is, Detroit. The people there... And this is, from, from what I can see, the people here are disgusted, not in the taxes as much as the corruption behind the taxes, as much as where the money's going, as much as the cousins, the relatives, the brothers, the sisters, the aunts, the uncles, all, the, all this stuff, uh, the programs and the onslaught of uh, raising registry to raise all this other stuff. I read Howie Carr, I listen to Barbara, I listen, to, and, and what it is, is, is it, you're, you're, you're uh, um, you're always there making these people... Well, listen, well, we appreciate it. We're just about running out of time, but I want to warn you, you ain't seen nothing yet. They're coming back again and again. And we'll be back in a moment to wrap things up here on our 100th broadcast, more of the scenes of the past. And I will say something right here that I have no problem saying. Um, I have never seen Bob Stanley with a woman. It was a very cruel joke to play with him. I apologize to him. It's unfortunate that Wade pushed me and kept calling me a liar and forced me to finally come out and say that. I, it was the only thing I had, the first proof where the sports writers would finally write something because I kept being called a prostitute, a groupie, some little groupie from California. Uh, I apologize to him from the standpoint, I will tell you that the girl that was used during the trick said, he kept saying, you know, I really love my wife. I should not be doing this. How about apology? Well, this is our final broadcast in this series of programs. I'll be popping up on another channel uh, maybe a couple of months from now. We thought you might enjoy remembering some of the marvelous guests who are part of our first 100 shows. Here, here you have uh, all six of the Democratic mm -hmm. candidates for president. We've come here to, to have a, a discussion here, uh, and we have yet to, to talk about an issue confronting the country. This Instead, is... we have an indirect, I understand, mm -hmm. you've done it indirectly, but by indirection, you, you are uh, exploring this whole set of issues. It is important to the American people to know the character and background of each of the candidates, and it is the overriding issue in this campaign.
Jack Flood said on the floor of the House a couple of months ago, no one wants to say the T word, taxes. Maybe we've got to start saying the T word. There's got to be an honest look at programs <coughs> care about. Well, maybe we should start studying history. You don't understand. The T word has been said year after year. They call it fees. You see, when Dukakis Rebel says Hanson. when Dukakis says an oil import fee is a tax, yes. that's a tax. But when he calls it a fee in the state, it's <coughs> only a fee. It doesn't so really there's a new package. Of, wait a minute. Yes. There's a new package. People must understand of, of 442 million dollars in fees, fines, and taxes. In my view, that's a plain ordinary tax. And I, I think Do I say happy birthday as you're starting your third year? Is that appropriate? Uh, it might be appropriate, that's right. And congratulations to the Bush administration for the highest ratings in terms of popularity in the history of poll taking. Isn't that amazing? Well, the president just goes out there every day and does it, and uh, the people are beginning to uh, understand what he's trying to do, and they seem to appreciate it. All we're saying is, you can do all of those things. We feel Without mandated margin. We feel that a state trooper with a pair of leggings and a badge and a gun and a club is not the person to enforce a public health issue. We feel it should not be mandatory. We feel it should not be pegged or that people should not lose their liability insurance. And you think if you look into that camera and say, buckle up, the citizens will do it. Yes. I'm telling you statistically they haven't Well, I have it. more faith in the citizens of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts as a result of their vote, which they clearly stated to the legislature, no, no mandatory it. use of it. And if we have to come back every year to do it, we'll come back every year better to, uh, you to do it. And we're back again, folks. This is our last broadcast on this series of programs. Let me thank Howie Carr for being with me tonight. Appreciate it, Howie. Thank you, And to Barbara Anderson. We haven't done the three of us together uh, as the governors, and we'll see you all tomorrow on uh, WRKO Radio at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And to all the marvelous guests, what a, what a pleasure it is to be able to do a program whereby you interview F. Lee Bailey, Jerry Spence, uh, Joe Kennedy, Mike Dukakis, Jack Flood, well... Strike Mike Dukakis. Uh, I'm, I'm joking. Uh, Attorney Larry O'Donnell, Donald Regan, uh, Tom Ellis was with us, Ted O'Brien, Janet Jagalian, Ted O'Brien, George Kaverian, uh, Commissioner Fair, Secretary of Administration and Finance, Frank Key, Victor Kaya, Mort Downey Jr., Howie Carr, David uh, Nyan, Barbara Anderson, Tom Maroney. The list is endless. What a great series it's been for me. And let me also say, uh, to the folks here at Fox 25. Never once did they tell us what to do or not to talk about something. We had uh, perfect freedom to do that. And that's what television should be all about, talking about the regional issues that uh, confront us. The great show we did with the presidential candidates, of which you've just seen a piece. So we should be seeing you again in just a few months, and we'd like to give credit as well to uh, some of the important people, all of the important people who worked on the show. Uh, my thanks again to Jack Roberts, who produced the program, our executive producer, Candace Fisher, uh, the regular crew, John Afanos, uh, Paula O'Connor, uh, Scott uh, Benny, um, uh, Ben Kozak, all those fellows who worked on the show on a day-to-day -day basis, and the rest of the folks who were all there every week. Thank you very much, and uh, join me tomorrow from 2 to 6 on WRKO. Good night, goodbye, and good luck. We'll see you again. Coming up at 11.30, those crazy brothers are at it again on Simon & Simon. But now, stick around for a dynamite episode of A Current Affair, next on Fox 25.